lyrics of being a sand lily. It was August 17th, 2016. My grandmother had passed away two weeks earlier, one day before my 22nd birthday. The grief, the grief of losing grandmother combined with the heaviness of working at Boys Ranch had begun to catch up with me. It was a warm summer evening and I had just finished leading devotionals at Lute's home. So I wandered out to Boot Hill Cemetery, picking a sand lily on the way. The sun was setting and the moon was rising in the east over the little Wild West Cemetery. Standing there in the desert of West Texas, sand lily in hand, looking down on Boys Ranch, the words of artist and missionary to Africa, Lilia Strotter, rung so very true. She says, Today's find was beautiful to the inward vision as well as to the outward. It was clusters of exquisite wild lilies, white and fragile and fragrant, growing out of the hot salt sand. Down below the surface, the storage of reserve material in the lily bulbs had silently taken place, and there they had lain, shrouded and waiting. The hour had come now, and no adverse condition could keep back the upspringing. The same Lord, over all, can store the roots in his spiritual creation, even though they have but smothering sand drifts around them. Only two and a half months earlier, I had driven onto campus and smiled at the words, Welcome New Iona Interns, written on the marquee. This would not be my first time being part of, it, part of an intentional community, or doing youth and children's ministry, or practicing spiritual disciplines, such as fixed hour prayer and scripture reading. Past experiences had taught me valuable lessons and prepared me for coming to Boys Ranch. However, they had also exposed my weaknesses. I was not too concerned about my ability to engage in spiritual disciplines. I had some reservations about community because of past struggles to connect with others and my tendency to retreat into solitude. My biggest concerns, however, was ministry. Introvertedness, insecurities, and struggling faith had hindered me from ministering well in the past. In spite of my fears and reservations, peace and excitement mingled within me, and I knew this was home. My first weeks at this, my first job after graduating from college, were filled with pleasant surprises. Boys Ranch proved to be a very welcoming, supportive environment to grow and stretch in during those first few months. I found myself completing training, leading worship, planning devotionals, and building relationships with residents and coworkers. My new bosses in Iona community were such a beautiful support system. It was all new and exciting and challenging, but the true tests would arise in the coming months. Spiritual disciplines, community, and ministry all proved to be more difficult and more rewarding than I had anticipated. Perhaps the most surprising growth and struggle took place while practicing spiritual disciplines. From past experiences, I knew that I'm fairly introverted and need time in solitude. However, the Iona Project taught me that there are different kinds of solitude and stillness. In his book, his book Life Together, Bonhoeffer says, real silence, real stillness, really holding one's tongue comes only as the sober consequence of spiritual stillness. Through much struggle, I have gained a deeper understanding of the difference between physical stillness and spiritual stillness, the difference in vegging out to Netflix and spending time with God. Because it was so hard to quiet my inner self, spiritual disciplines proved to be harder than expected. It was easy to show up for prayer three times a day, and even though Bible readings often got ahead of me, I usually caught back up quickly. It was more difficult to be truly present and spiritually still during prayer and scripture reading. Sometimes I would go days without being silent and surrendered, surrendered before God. My mind and heart always found themselves in a million other places. Unfortunately, it was hardest to slow down and sit with God in the moments that I most desperately needed to do so. Only a few short weeks ago, I hit a wall. For some time, I had been keeping a rigorous pace both on and off the clock. I was li living as if everything would fall apart unless I was there for each person in my life. A new week dawned that was not so busy, and I found myself in a pit of negativity. I was done giving of myself and was bitter at everything and everyone for making me feel unhappy. For several days, I haphazardly tried to force myself to be nice without much success. Finally, the community lovingly addressed the issue they were seeing within me. Something had to be done, so I went to God, cussing and angry and hurt. In, in return, God broke me in the kindest and gentlest way possible. 
He stripped me down, simultaneously revealing the lies I had believed and pouring out his vast love and mercy. That day I came one step closer to learning the painful but stunningly beautiful lesson that I had no ability to help others, to shine, to shine Christ's light, to produce a flower, unless, as Lilius Trotter says, down below the surface, the storage of reserve material in the lily bulbs had silently taken place. This lesson and many others would have been less powerful, slower in coming, or perhaps still untouched without the chapel community. Living in the middle of nowhere in the midst of many hurting young people and difficult situations, we eventually came to truly need the friendship and support of one another. Multiple times every day, we would come together to laugh and pray and share, and I soon discovered a deep sense of belonging. Even when I felt like a sand lily trying to bloom in a desert, the Iona community and chapel staff were a reminder of God's power and His ability to change hearts and, and mend broken relationships. We had many interpersonal issues and conflicts as we learned to live together, work together, and play together. But even these issues are a testament of God's intervention. It was our shared passion for Christ and desire to live together as members of His body that made things work. Without spending time in scripture and prayer, our community would have fallen apart. And without the support of Christian community, ministry would have been nearly impossible. Even with a supportive community, ministry was still hard. There were many testing moments. Hopefully some wisdom was gained on how to handle these situations, but mostly I learned how to have grace for myself amidst failure. It seems the inevitable failures that occur while doing ministry at Boys Ranch have a way of either strengthening or breaking a person's passions. During difficult devotionals with girls who were disrespectful, disengaged, or dysregulated, I found myself getting discouraged at times, but also growing in passion. Because fruit did not come easily, I realized how much I wanted that fruit, how much I desired to know God, and how badly I wanted the girls to know Him too. I also discovered a passion for active ministry. It was hard to figure out how to connect with so many girls of different ages and unique personalities. There were times when ex exhaustion and discouragement set in, and it took all the strength I could muster to get back out there. In these difficult moments, I wanted to back down, but didn't because of the passion God was renewing within. That's when those beautiful moments of playing with baby goats and watching the sunset and driving around at 15 miles an hour with the windows rolled down happened. Those moments when her face finally lit up from understanding a Bible verse or how to play that song on the guitar or finding middle C on the piano or successfully creating a double crochet stitch. Those times when, as Lilius Trotter says, the hour had come now and no adverse condition could keep back the upspringing. These were the mountaintop moments in which passion produced the flowers of breakthrough and love and laughter and learning. As the year progressed, it seems that the darkness of evil and sin became increasingly real, and the light of God's truth shone brighter. I became more aware of God's love and faithfulness in each season. And so I go into year two knowing that it holds joys and trials both familiar and unfamiliar to the experiences of this year. The first steps into a deeper personal relationship with God, a richer community experience, and a more effective ministry have been taken. It is an honor and a joy to continue serving at Cal Farley's Boys Ranch and to continue discovering the perks of being a sand lily. Thanks.